One of the lawyers that De Beers sent up to Timmins on Friday last week and again yesterday to fight to get these blockades taken down is Neil Smithman. He joins us now in the studio. Welcome to the show, Mr. Smithman. Thank you. Now, you were in court yesterday in Timmins. What did the judge say about the blockaders and about the cops who haven't moved them? About the blockaders, he had uh, much to say, but not as much as he did the previous uh, week because what... Uh, what his honor was dealing with was mainly the issue about removing the blockade and having the injunctive order uh, enforced by the police. An injunctive order, that basically means get out of the road, is that right? Essentially, yes. Now, that order was issued Friday morning. It is Thursday afternoon today. As far as you know, the blockade is still going on. What happens if those blockaders don't move? Well, it's up to the police to enforce the order. That's, um, that's the police's uh, duty, as it were. Um, the issue is, of course, with the police is that they have discretion about when and how an order should be enforced. Uh, the issue is, uh, and that was before the court, which was initiated by me on behalf of De Beers, uh, to try and see what we could do to move that along because each day is very costly to the company. Yeah, I mean, how many days does this ice road actually work? It's got to be f very frozen. That's the whole point That's of an ice point. road. How, it, it's been blocked for how many days out of how many useful days this year? Uh, it's been blocked. Uh, f there were three days, and then it was the um, blockades were taken down, then uh, put up again, so it's been another six, seven days. So it's about ten days it's been blocked down, and it's, uh, it's fast reaching the point where... This is becoming extremely crucial and critical to De Beers in order to get the heavy equipment supplies to the site and not to mention 11 million liters of uh, fuel uh, for the site to last so for a year. So we've got a conflict here. We've got a, a mine that ha is on a short time fuse and you've got a clearly political police force, two political police force who would rather not have to, to frankly, do their job. Now, here, here's what's fascinating to me. I want to show it on the screen. Paragraph 3 of the judge's order last Friday specifically names an officer from the OPP and an officer from NAPS, the Indian band, and says you are authorized and required to do everything. Like, it's not just, hey, this is a suggestion. You are required to. What did the OPP's lawyers say yesterday for why they didn't come in and move this ragtag band of six unarmed, middle-aged you know, bozos in the road. Like, it's not like they're in bunkers, Oka style. There's six hobos in the road. Why hasn't OPP moved them? Well, the issue is, as explained by uh, Chris Diana, the uh, counsel on behalf of the police, is that once again, it's a matter of discretion when the, the police have to decide when is the best time in order to enforce the order. So it's like Groundhog Day. How many weeks? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's this mysterious thing. I mean, what on earth could they possibly be weighing? Did, did the OPP's lawyer give any indication what they're weighing other than their own fear of being called politically incorrect? Well, they didn't, um, they didn't mention that the police were afraid to... Um, I mean, afraid politically. I don't think that they'd be afraid militarily. Well, I don't know if uh, politically, but the, the, the police are... Uh, no, I'm, believe me, I, I'm not uh, trying to put forward their, their case, but I can tell you what was, uh, what was uh, said by their counsel with respect to why the police had been unable so far to enforce the order. And the largest concern was the sensitivity with respect to Aboriginal cases. There's a special unit of the OPP that deals with um, cases such as this. Uh, uh, now, whose sensitivity? I mean, the not Aboriginals. The sensitivity about the so about of, of the of the six criminals, the six suspects. Uh, well, about uh, the um, the. First Nations issues in general. Okay, but who would have the sensitivity? I mean, an issue itself is not sensitive. People are sensitive. So are we trying not to hurt the feelings of the six blockaders, or are we trying not to hurt the feelings of Chief Teresa Spence because she's still recovering from her dramatic you know, hunger strike? Or whose feelings are we trying not to hurt? Did I, they, I'm not, I know I'm grilling you. I'm not actually grilling you. I'm just trying to smoke no, out what, what, what Chris, uh, yeah. Diane, the lawyer for the cops, would have said. Well, what I understand, the concern of the police is that... Uh, is that this matter not escalate so that if you had a confrontation with the police with respect to the removal of the blockade that could escalate matters and turn it from what they perceive to be i suppose a rather small matter into a much larger matter so the cops so the cops are the ones who are afraid they really are afraid then and their concern is that it could this is what was said yeah. with the idle no more movement etc 
that it could become a more of a national problem. As so opposed it's political. To, so there so, is a political aspect to it. There always is. Yes. So the Victor mine, the De Beers mine, is the sacrificial lamb that must be sacrificed because we don't want to inflame political sensitivities of a radical movement nationwide. I don't disagree with you. And that's what, what was one of my submissions. Like, who is the victim here? And who is the one that uh, is disobeying a court order? And that's... Do you have any remedy against that damn fool OPP commissioner who is making this political decision? Can you? If you are losing millions of dollars and maybe tens of millions of dollars, can you sue that damn fool chief commissioner of the OPP and get any damages from him? Or are you just no. caught in the middle here? No, that's, uh, that, that would lead you nowhere. Um, the Can his, quote, discretion be reviewed? This is that Dupuy. This is that OPP regional officer who was required to act. He's doing nothing. You have no recourse at all for the damages for your client. Well, what the judge said that was not reported, I think, was very telling. What he did say, um, and first off, I should back up. Um, I, bought, I brought um, a motion to try and get this moved along uh, before the judge with respect to the enforceability of the order. Um, his honor, on his own volition, summoned the two commanders, unit commanders, one from the OPP and one, one from the Aboriginal Police Force, to come to court to listen to him. And, uh, did he, they come? They did come. They have to, well, yes, they come. When the judge summons, you come. They attended, and what the judge said in open court at the end of the hearing was that I know that I, do, I cannot order you because of your discretion to enforce the order, but if I find that you are not doing everything possible, I will have you back in court and I will consider contempt. Hmm. Cops in contempt. I think we're there already. Neil Smithman, thanks for being here and thanks for trying to stand up for the rule of law.